Springs here. Actually, we're knee deep in the spring and I got a gang of work to do back here. I mean, don't get me wrong, I haven't been slacking. My beds are looking pretty tight right now. I'm really happy with the way they're going. But my summer goal, or my spring and summer goal, is to actually get this stuff all nice and planted out with a bunch of different perennials and annuals. But before I do that, I gotta make sure that this soil is tight. Now I've already come through here about a year or so ago and just littered it with a bunch of diff different cover crops, mainly consisting of lagoons. Now what makes the lagoon so cool is that they're considered a nitrogen fixing plant. The way they fix nitrogen is by having a symbiotic relationship with a bacteria called rhizobium. Now what the rhizobium do is climb into the cell walls of the roots of the, of the lagoon and begin to colonize. And over time they begin to form these little bumps called nodules. Now inside of those nodules, those bacteria or rhizobium are um, basically taking atmospheric nitrogen and turning it into a nitrogen that the plant can then use. Now remember, this is symbiotic, so in return, the plant supplies all the energy the bacteria needs. Now contrary to popular belief, the nitrogen that's being fixed and stored in the lagoon really isn't readily available to any other, the, any other surrounding plants or, into the, or in that soil. In fact, that nitrogen is only really being utilized by that plant. I mean, there will be a little bit that kind of goes out into other plants and stuff like that and into the soil, but for the most part, it's only going to be utilized for that plant until that plant has met its full life cycle. Now, after it's all died back, then the nitrogen will be released into the soil. Or, after I come along and chop and drop this. Not only did I throw down the peas for a cover crop, I also utilized clover, because they're a legume as well, and pretty much do the same thing as the peas. Here's some clover here. Um, just at a smaller rate, it's a smaller plant. Also, I threw down daikon radish to help break up this clay soil. I also threw down, um, dandelion and lamb's quarters. Yes, weeds. I did that because those guys have really long tap roots that somehow managed to get way deep down into the soil and begin to mine up all those minerals and nutrients from dip from the depths of the soil. Now all those minerals and nutrients are going to be stored inside the plant. Till I come along, chop it and drop it and leave it for my mulch layer. Then it'll begin to release all those minerals and all that nutrients back into the soil, making it more available to the plants I want to grow. If you're unlike me and don't want any plants in your cover crop mix to grow back, just harvest a plant before it goes to flower and seed. Now right about a month or so ago, I came out here and chopped and dropped this whole area. And what I mean by chopping and dropping is simply <clears throat> chopping and dropping to form this mulch layer. It's pretty simple, right? Anyhow, underneath this mulch layer, you're going to find a whole plethora of different types of insects. See that? You got roly-polies down here. There's decollete snails that eat the eggs and babies of your common brown snails. These are really good guys to have. Um, there's pincher bugs. There's slugs. There's all kind of stuff down here. And at this stage of the game, all these guys are considered good guys as far as I'm concerned. Because what they're doing is taking all that mineral content from the dandelion, from the lamb's quarter, the tops of the legumes. They're taking all that stuff and eating it and making it decompose even faster. They're pooping it all out into the soil and actually feeding the soil while doing it. At that same time, I also came and I started to till this soil up. And now I'm just pretty much getting back to finishing the job, unfortunately. But anyhow, I've already tilled this soil, so I'm not gonna till it again. Reason being is because if I go even deeper into this soil, I'm gonna find things like worms, of course. I'm gonna find worms. Oops. But not only am I gonna find worms, but there's a web. Now this isn't it, of course. This is just the first web-like thing that I could find. Just imagine a web. It's just underneath the surface of the soil here. It's made up of fungi and a whole bunch of different microorganisms. Now, what they're doing is helping me take nutrient from one part of the garden and moving it to the other part of the garden. And the stronger that I can get that, the better for my garden overall. So, by me coming out here and tilling it, that's only, the only thing I'm gonna do is disturb that ecosystem and break it down. And then they're gonna have to rebuild it. And I'll come down here if I till it again and break it up again, and so on and so forth. So instead of me doing that, what I wanna do is just leave it alone and just let it build because ultimately all that's doing is making my soil that much stronger. The soil food web. Now I'm removing this mulch layer so that most of those insects 
will just kind of clear out by themselves while I get ready for the next step. Even with all the biology that's going on, I also want to add a few key ingredients starting with the best compost I can afford. Thanks, man. I find buying in bulk is generally the best bang for my buck. Most soil and side yards allow you to fill up your own personal vehicle. The biggest difference I've found is the way they may sell it. I've had people sell to me as little as I want, and I've also had people only sell to me by the scoop. Now when I can't bum my grandma's truck or a truck from one of my friends, I like to use clean garbage cans and demolition bags. You can find both at your local hardware store, I'm sure. If not, I know you can find them online. They're not that expensive. If you needed to, you could probably just get away using demolition bags. Just remember not to fill them all the way up. So this year I'm going with the veggie mix down at my local soil yard. There's all kind of stuff in here. There's coconut core for all that moisture retention. That's something you definitely want. They have vermiculite in there. Check that out. There's uh, pea pebbles for aeration. There's chicken manure, there's cow manure, there's fir bark, and not to mention there's some topsoil in here as well. I can't stress enough how important it is to make sure that if you are going to be using any kind of cow manure, chicken manure, horse manure, any of those kind of animal manures, that it is composted all the way through because all that nitrogen, what it's gonna end up doing is burning up your plants, you know? In fact, this stuff right here has been composted right about six months to a year. So this stuff is really, really broken down real nice and fine. Check very little big pieces in here, you know? And that's what I find most of the time. I find a lot of big pieces hanging out inside of your bag compost, you know, that you'd buy from Home Depot or a lot of the nurseries, you know? And that's not what I want. That, for the most part, a lot of times is just for a, uh, for like mulching. I mean, I guess you can get potting soil too, but a lot of times that's nothing more than just peat moss, you know, that doesn't really have any kind of nutrition value, nutritional value to it. I want to start, like I said, with some of the strongest that I can find. And buying in bulk is always a good way. Now, the next thing I like to use are worm castings. This is where I get all that beneficial bacteria and microbial activity into my, uh, into my soil. Worm castings are probably one of the best organic fertilizers that you could use. You can't add too much, which is always a plus. It can be argued that it also adds in uh, moisture retention, right, just because of the way it has to break down by design. Worm castings don't just help your plant to grow, they also help in protecting your roots from other bad bacteria. Not to mention, they also help strengthen your soil food web. Now, what makes the Worm Gold Plus castings really good is that they also add kelp and volcanic rock. That's just adding more minerals into my soil, which is something I definitely, definitely want. So add some more worm castings in here. For the most part, I just kind of do things at equal parts, if you will. I mean, there's really no rhyme or reason for it. Mix that up. that all nice and deep in here. Yeah, this stuff really just ensures that I am putting in a lot of nice organic matter into my, into my soil. Now the next ingredient I'm going to be adding into my soil is rock dust. Rock dust is where you get all those extra trace minerals that you would typically find on your topsoil back into your soil, seeing that most of the topsoils nowadays, at least the topsoils that I know of or that I see, are kind of deficient in a lot of minerals. Um, so rock dust helps put a lot of those back. Now this is their growing bag, and if I'm not mistaken, I want to say that there's 57 different trace elements that you would find in the periodic table in, inside of this bag, you know? So that's a lot of stuff going on in there. So I want to add is that stuff. Again, it's a cold fertilizer, so I can add as much of this or as little of this as in I want to. Now a little bit actually will go a long way, but I normally kind of go a little crazy when it comes to it because I won't be adding any more rock dust really until pretty much the beginning of the next season. Rock dust as well as the, the worm castings, and even a lot of the stuff that's found in the compost, those are gonna be long-term type fertilizers, you know? Those are just gonna be things that'll be breaking down over time. So it's really good to have that kind of stuff, that kind of base into your soil when you start. 
get that stuff all nice and mixed in here. The rock dust is extremely fine, you know what I'm saying? Very, very fine. I mean, it's rock dust. That's what it is. It's dust of rocks. <laughs> you can snort this stuff if you wanted to. Don't. Don't snort it. Though. That's... <laughs> it's not a good idea. But, uh, but don't. Don't snort it. Just think about it. The periodic table has like, what, 118 elements on it? So seeing that different plants want different things on that periodic table, I want to make sure I have as many elements as well as minerals in my soil as I possibly can. Now, I know a lot of times we're only talking about, as gardeners, you know, the NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. But that's only three things, you know? It's only three. And dude, there's over a hundred. So I'm gonna try to get as many of those in there as I possibly can. That's where it's gonna help me out, and not just only in the growth and the beauty of my plant, but it's also what's gonna help me out when it comes to the taste. You put those, those minerals in there, we got some good tasting veggies, you know? And that's what I want. So rock dust, always a good way to go. So the next thing I'll be adding into this little mixture of mine is the Sunshine Advanced Mix Number Four Growing Mix. <laughs> it's all organic, of course. Ingredients read, this product is a blend of 45 to 55% Canadian sphagnum peat moss, which is gonna help out with moisture retention. Horticultural grade perlite, we'll talk about that in a minute. Core, or coconut core, build on my line for a pH adjuster. So before you use this, you probably want to have a soil test. Mycorrhiza, which is a fungus that you find in nature that helps bring nutrients as well as moisture to the root of your plant. An organic weighting agent, which is a yucca extract. So I want to get all that good stuff into my soil as well. So with, between this and the compost that I've already used, there's really no need for me to go and put any more perlite into this, into this mix, or any more vermiculite into this mix. Perlite and vermiculite both do very, very similar things. Your perlite is more of a porous glass type material, so water doesn't absorb into it. If you were to get like a microscope and look into this, you'd be able to see like little, little small holes. And in those little, little small holes, when this thing starts getting wet, the water kind of just sits in there and the roots can just dive into those little holes and then start sucking the water out of that. Perlite. Not to mention, it helps aerate. Now, the difference between this and vermiculite is that this is a volcanic glass that kind of gets, that gets heated up to a certain degree and it pops like popcorn. The uh, vermiculite does the same thing, but those are more of a mineral content. The difference between the vermiculite and the perlite is that the vermiculite actually absorbs the water, so it can actually hold in moisture, and it can also absorb uh, different minerals and different nutrients as well. The number one key ingredient to all my soil building. The poops or jacks. Rabbit castings. Yeah. I don't know your teeth, girl. Now, these little power pellets are packed with all kinds of beneficial bacteria, not to mention nutrients. As well as just because of the shape and the way that they break down, they really, really hold in moisture. They really help aerate the soil. Rabbit castings are much like worm castings in the fact that they will not burn up your plants. It's cold manure. Well, thank you, Jackie, for all that you do. Thank you, Jackie. Now, minus the sunshine, this is give or take the same soil mix I use for all my raised garden beds. The last thing I want is for this soil to get compacted, so I'll make sure to never walk on this section. It's only gonna make it that much harder for my plants to grow. Like I said before, I don't ever plan on coming back here and tilling it, seeing that I've already done it. Now, if I was able to do this all in one shot, I would definitely till this into the soil. But seeing that I've already tilled it and I don't wanna mess with any more of the ecosystem that I already have anymore, from this point on, all I'm gonna be doing is layering it and allow the worms to do the tilling for me. Dude, worms work on weekends, you know? And they like to do the work, so I'm gonna let them do it. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all, this little section is now ready to plant, so I'm gonna head on over to my nursery and grab some jalapeno because they are delicious and plant this bad boy out. Now, I didn't need to go about this section the way that I did. I could have very easily, especially with a section this size, I could have very easily had come out here just with some compost and start planting it out. 
But seeing that I had the time, the space, and no idea what it is that I wanted to actually grow back here, I thought it might be fun just to experiment with building the system. Bottom line is, do what works for you. You know what I'm saying? This is working for me, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Now, outside of all of that, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'm dying to hear what it is that you got to say. Don't forget to rate, subscribe, and if you want to keep up with what it is that I'm doing in between videos, look for me on Instagram at the Seeds of Zanzadu. I'm Justin Gay. This is Seeds of Zanzadu, y'all. Peace. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching.